Hi, welcome to the Canon's YouTube channel. That's me. Today I'm going to be doing something completely new and original and review video games. Ah, uh, Spyro. One of my favorite video games growing up. The sense of adventure of the vast worlds, the rewarding feeling of collecting every last gem. I'll be honest, I only played the first Spyro, and I loved it. I wanted the others, but I didn't have a PS1, so I was at the mercy of the games my friends bought. From what I've seen, Spyro 2 and 3 continue to expand what made the first game so great. Enter, Spyro, enter, the Dragonfly. Now by this point, Spyro wasn't being developed by its original creator, Insomniac Games. It was being developed by, um, Check 6 Games. Well, never heard of them, but if they gave them a high profile series like Spyro, it can't be too bad. You know, the ears are very sensitive organs, and when you scream in them, it hurts. Whose idea was it to start the game this way, anyway? Oh yeah. Damn you, Check 6! So basically, Ripto comes back from the den, he's like, join me. And Spyro's like, no way! Then Ripto waves his wand and boom, plot. Dragonfly's gone, find them. But hey, Spyro games were never known for their story. You know this game is a generational upgrade from Spyro 3. So, let's see those amazing visuals. And they're terrible. I mean, clearly the effort went elsewhere. The textures are bland and everything just looks like a vast empty space. The world feels dead. And one of the original concepts of the first Spyro was to make the world feel alive. However, there are some exceptions, and you can really tell which levels they put all the work into. In some sections of the game, you can literally see it falling apart at the seams. Sound design is more of the same. The same stock sound effects are used over and over. Not to mention the many audio glitches. Especially when breaking bases, like this. Boss breaks here. Nothing yet. We got ourselves a problem here. You're damn now right. These here rip talks have set up shop in our tree. Still waiting. And there it goes. Huh. Is that really how it works? Huh. Perhaps I owe Check Six Games an apology. You see, damn it! <laughs> the music of the game is a different affair, with it being done by Coppola, the drummer of the police that did the first three games. The tracks are pretty catchy and fit the mood of the level. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's discuss gameplay. You see, the buttons control the characters. It's really quite revolutionary. Each level contains 10 dragonflies and a number of gems. Most are just scattered around the levels, and some you have to do some specific challenges to obtain. You would think that dragonflies just sitting out in the open would be easy to catch, but thanks to terrible hit detection, it's harder than some of the challenges. Which leads me to one of my favorite parts about the game, the slides. These are just so much fun to me. I'm really not sure why. I just get in some kind of zen-like focus while sliding down to the bottom. With only one problem, they're too easy. The lava slide can be beaten on the first try, and the honey race is not much of a race at all. With one huge exception, that mother ice slide. Beating it for the first time is hard enough, but you have to beat it twice with barely enough time. Plus you have to anticipate the many, many glitches. Now the time has come to talk about the glitches. The ice slide is not an isolated incident. There are glitches everywhere. The entire game feels like it's gonna fall apart at every turn. 
So now let's look at some of my favorite glitches. Spyro's seizure. Tiki in the wall. No textures, no problem. Who turned out the lights? And sliding around. Unlike previous Spyros, it feels like nothing has any weight, like nothing is actually there. There are also considerably less levels. In fact, the only real new thing about this game is the new breath abilities. You earn each breath by collecting runes and placing them into a statue. And you learn them all pretty early on. They're mostly just like glorified keys. They open gates that open up the new areas in the Dragon Realms. Bubble Breath is almost exclusively for capturing dragonflies. Electric Breath can be used to power stuff. And Ice Breath is for... Getting a kite out of a tree. Yes, ice solves everything. Got a problem? Throw some ice at it. Well, that's really all there is to say on Spyro Enter the Dragonfly, so on to the epic boss showdown. This is an odd boss fight. It actually gets easier as you go along. Besides a few cheap shots, its first form is pretty easy. When he grows in the most awkward way possible, he actually pushes you to where you need to be to hit him again. Alright, here comes the final form. Odd transformation. Uh, is there something you should be doing right now? Looks like Ripto's off his meds again. So after resetting the fight, he's pretty easy to beat. Just jump and dodge. And did I beat him? Oh, there he goes. Don't worry, Ripto. You're not the only one. So after all of that, what are we treated to? Every last one of you will be sorry! Yeah, I bet. Well, everything is finally back to normal. Isn't it, Spyro? So that's Spyro into the Dragonfly, and it's... terrible. So is it really the developer's fault that this game is so terrible? Well, it could have been the limited development time. I contacted the man himself, Spyro the Dragon, to find out. So, Spyro, a lot of people would say this game sucks. Care to comment? Hi. Thank you for watching my very first video. And, um, like, subscribe, you know, the usual, if you want. This isn't even connected to anything. Thanks again for watching my first game review, and um, in the next week or so, I'll have another video out about this strange company called Vasco Games, making all these weird mobile games. So stay tuned, and subscribe.